so we uh, are in the middle of in the middle of a huge conflict right now in terms of the Israelis and the Palestinians. Now, all of these conflicts were forced because of is the is Israel's forced Palestinian evictions, which are illegal. So that has caused all of the massive uh, crisis that crisis that's going on right now. Now the Israeli government has uh, is is making the decision. Um, now let me fix this here. So they're making the decision to illegally evict Palestinians from. Um, uh, from their homes, okay. So we need to know that there is to, to in order to create new housing in favor of the new settlers uh, against which is against international law. Now, who are the new settlers? The Jews, the Jews in East, in East Jerusalem. Now, this has led to mass protests and conflict in Jerusalem. Now, the protests fl uh, flared because of planned illegal evictions of Palestinians from Sheikh Jarrah. Uh, Sheikh Jarrah, uh, the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood, I'm sorry, in East Jerusalem by the Israeli government. Now, uh, the, uh, is the, um, uh, the Jewish s settlers have put up a lengthy court battle against Palestinian families. And in, in fact, the Supreme Court uh, had to halt. This is all last week, by the way, and I'm sorry that I didn't get a video out. But I, I, you know, I was doing school, and but now I'm good. The, so they, they hand, so they halted the handing down of the ruling last Monday, and uh, on this decision on whether to allow these settlements to go through or not, um, and you get a a, a a sense of, oh gee, I wonder why they they halted it. Oh, because of the conflict. No, maybe because you already had a ruling and you knew. Oh God! If we let this continue, holy crap! This is gonna go even worse. And as the week has gone by, as there's been more killings and more violence by Israel, by the way, people are gonna say, "Oh my God, Jason, there's so much worse." Exactly. Now I'm gonna show you this clip that's gonna show you more uh, of what's exactly going on. Um, here's a little news clip, and uh, let's go ahead and watch this, and then we'll come back and talk about it. There's also another issue uh, that is uh, fueling those tensions is uh, the potential eviction of four Palestinian families from one of the Palestinian neighborhoods in Sheikh Jarrah in annexed uh, East uh, Jerusalem. We have been talking to uh, one of the daughters of one of the families. Um, they are facing eviction in favor of uh, Jewish settlers. Let's have a look. Mona al Kurd is documenting everything that happens here for social media. Her family is one of four families facing eviction from their homes in the Palestinian neighborhood of Sheikh Sharach in East Jerusalem. Right-wing settlers could soon move in here. This is our life. As Palestinians, we are the owners of the land. We lived here legally and everything is documented legally. They come here and occupy the place and they want to occupy what remains of the neighborhood. This part of their house has already been taken over by Jewish settlers a decade ago, just like across the street where settlers moved into this house. They claim parts of this neighborhood is actually their land and have waged a lengthy court battle against the families. All right. So these evictions break international law. They break international law. Okay. That that's the big problem. Now these houses were and these housing uh, uh these this house the housing and these houses were established for Palestinians in 1948 after the Israeli Jordanian Jordanian war and so um you know I, I'm first on this clip I'm happy that they're uh, uh broadcasting what this poor young lady is having to go through with her family on social media way to show the world what's going on here because this is illegal all of it is illegal. Nothing is legal about it. Now, Sheikh Jarrah, uh, those were people uh, who were evicted from their homes um, 
because the uh, Israeli government, Israel, rolled tanks and evicted them from their homes. They they rolled tanks in and, and tanks in and took them out. Now, here's the thing, right? That's so weird about the Middle East. Settlers say, well, uh, that they bought this a long time ago, and the original deeds uh, go- were from back in 1876. Now, uh, if they owned it, right? If they owned it and they owned it over a hundred years ago, it must be theirs. That's the argument, right? Okay. Well, this is what's weird, right? What they're basically doing is, well, I owned it before you. Well, I owned it before you. I owned it before you. My answers, <coughs> I'm sorry. My own ancestors owned it in 1876. Okay. Well, why are we going back to 1876? Why don't we go back to 1875? You know who owned it? You, you, you do, do you want me to uh, do you want me to tell you who owned this land back in 1976 or, or 1975 the Turks the Turks owned it oh these people owned it before then oh you want to go back 2,000 years well, guess what they owned it so this is so weird that uh, you know that they do this now they also have it's like oh no Israeli settler, settlers you have to get out Get out. This is my housing. That's equally absurd. Equally absurd. Absurd. Now, if you are a person living in these houses now who are, who are Jewish and you're a settler, if you believe this nonsense, if the, the people who were evicted, evicted from their houses, can they go back and get their homes? You know, they have property deeds. They have trusts. Can they go back? Can they go back and get their homes? No. Oh, why? Because they're Palestinians. Right? Because uh, th- this is a race. You have a racist, inevitably racist ideology that uh, Panest- Palestinian- Palestinians are not allowed to have their homes back, new homes or old homes. And they're not allowed to have homes, uh, you know, or, or how should I say? They're not allowed to have homes because they're Palestinians. Oh, okay, so this is a systematically racist system that you are supporting. This is all racist. And if you don't think it's racist, well, guess what? Then maybe you're racist. How do you like them apples? I just called you racist, right? Now, this would be a war crime if we broke treaties that are in place if, you do, if, if this is actually done, if they do this, right? If they force them out. Now, why would they do this? What's going on here? It, 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 it's incredible. Right. It's going to be a war crime. You know, this this is going on. You're not allowing them to get their homes back because you're racist, because you're Palestinian, because they're Palestinians. Now, why would this be happening? Because and by the way, the media doesn't report this. It's it's somewhere de- buried deep within another media story. And they just mention it as like a side piece like this has been brought to you by Anchor. This has been brought to you by Squarespace, Squarespace.com. What bull crap? Okay, so the reason why this is going on is because Benjamin Netanyahu is having trouble forming a government, and his opponents are trying to form a government not only last week, but this week. This week. Now, here's the thing. BB, BB Netanyahu is now saying, hey, let's shake things up. Let's do the Sheikh Shagrath thing. Then, ne- then let's raid the Al-Aqsa, ma- the, uh, Al-Aqsa Mask, and, and I'm going to go over the Al-Aqsa Mask. Uh, raid in in another video and with the Andrew Yang video we're going to do this week. I know, right? We're going to do another one. It's been a couple few weeks, a couple weeks, I think. And and so so he's like, let's do the Sheikh Jarrah the thing. Then let's do the raid the Al Aqsa Mosque, uh, mosque so that uh, so that uh, uh, Hamas is forced to respond. And then we'll act like we're the victims. We'll act as the victims. We'll we'll grieve as the victims. And then Benjamin Netanyahu saves the day by murdering Palestinians and Palestinian kids. Oh, and then look, uh, Hamas responds as expected, attacks as as expected, and he kills one person. And then uh, one Israeli police was... was um, Injured lightly. Injured lightly? Well, guess what? Last week, their first response is was for Israel's, for Israel's first response. I can't talk. They killed 20 Palestinians, including nine children. And by the way, now it's at 65 Palestinians, including 16 children. Okay, so who's committing the most violence? Ain't Hamas. Ain't Hamas. What is it now? Six people that have died compared to 65? 
So 59, is that is that the number? 59 more people were killed, 60 more people were killed by Israel? Yeah, no. Israel is the violent criminals here. Now, let's talk about the occupation, okay? It's, as I said, it's explicitly racist. Why is it explicitly racist, Jason? Because what they're saying is Palestinians shouldn't be able to govern themselves. Why shouldn't they be able to govern themselves? Oh, uh, because they're too violent. What do you mean they're too violent? What do you mean? Give me an answer. What does that mean? Because I don't know what they mean by too violent. Uh, you know, uh, Israel killed 65 Palestinians. Palestinians, Hamas only killed one or, or six, whatever it was. One in their first response, six now. Who's the more violent one? Who's the one rolling tanks in? Who's the one sending, uh, you know, evicting people and raiding mosques with smoke grenades, rubber bullets, pepper spray, tear gas, and all that? Okay, anyway. Now, if the Palestinians are not too violent, why can't they govern themselves, right? It, it makes no sense. They should be able to govern themselves. Oh, uh, we need a cooling down period. We need a cooling period. It's been over 50 years, over five decades. What... What are we waiting for? What cooling period do you need? What cooling period do you need? This has been going on forever that Israel has treated Palestinians like third, like second, third, and even 10th class citizens. What the hell are you waiting for? Because see, no matter what Palestinians do, no matter what they do, if they go to the UN and they try and do some diplomacy and, and get some diplomacy done and try and propose a resolution... <gasps> <gasps> no, that's unacceptable. It's borderline terrorism if you go there, if you do diplomacy. Okay, well, if they did a massive protest near the wall, <gasps> don't you dare go near that wall. Don't ever go near that wall. And then they murder every single doctor that goes near that wall. Oh boy, gee. I, so, so if they can't peacefully, peaceful, they can't peacefully protest, they, 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 they can't go to mosques. They can't do anything just because, oh, you're Palestinians and we, we don't want you to do anything because we don't, we don't like you. We're racist. That's blatant racism right there. That right. So you can't go get your homes. You can't have medicine. You can't, you know, uh, have permits to build. You can't connect your, your housing to solar. We're going to send our soldiers over there and literally take solar panels off your house. You can't do nothing. You can't peacefully protest. You can't go to the UN. If they peace protest peacefully, they're racist. Oh, I'm sorry. They're terrorists. They probably use the racist excuse too. They're terrorists. If they use the, 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 um, the violence that Israel uses, even a tad bit of the violence, just way less. Oh, they're terrorists. Oh, violent terrorists. Oh, but Israel does it, and they kill 65 people, children, adults. They bomb open air mosques. They bomb markets. They bomb a media building like they did yesterday. Oh, oh that's okay. That's okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. And by the way, you know who backs this? The United States backs this racism. They back this racism and they support this occupation they're supporting a racist system okay i need you to understand that you have the biden administration both sizing this crap oh well israel has the right to defend themselves so does palestine so do the palestinians that land is not Israel's. That w The West Bank is not Israel's. And by the way, that thing I mentioned about Benjamin Netanyahu uh, saying, oh my God, uh, 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 I'm going to do this so that you'll reelect me and I'm going to commit all these freaking crimes. I'm sorry. And he's a dictator. And you can say, well, well, you know, he won an election. I'm sorry. He didn't win an election in the goddamn West Bank. That... That'd be like Joe Biden winning the election here in the United States and then going to England and going, <laughs> um, I'm going to raid your mosques in England. I'm going to raid the Church of England. I'm going to raid the Buckingham Palace because I feel like it. Um, yeah, because I won an election. Yeah, not here. Not here. Not here, mate. You do not win an election in Great Britain. Get your, get your hiney out of here. They do not speak like, get your butt out of here. They do not speak like that. I'm sorry for my British accent. I know people are going to call me and possibly like, you're terrible. I know. Um, oh my God, he's a fraud. Bar me. Anyway, <laughs> that's rubbish. 
<laughs> that's, that's so rubbish. I gotta stop. Anyway, come on, right? So Netanyahu having trouble forming this government, so he's committing all this freaking violence. That's what's going on. Okay? If you don't believe me, you're inherently blind like me. And I can see this. Okay? Now, so Netanyahu ignores orders against settlements. He continues building settlements on the Gaza Strip. And, by the way, this keeps happening, happening over and over and over again. There's always a conflict with the Israelis and the Palestinians. And it, and by the way, it's not the Palestinians that are like, you know what? Let's start a conflict with Israel. My God. Now, Netanyahu chose this time. It's interesting how he chose it, right? Why did he pick it? Why, why did he decide on this day? On these days? Well, because, well, one, he's trying to de- deflect from the fact that he can't form a freaking government. So he's forced to go even more further to the right, to the extremes. And he's doing it to distract from the fact that he's fighting corruption uh, charges, corruption criminal char- uh, charges. Oops. Oops. Now, it's also interesting that he chose this on Jerusalem Day, where Israelis march to show their uh, go show their pride. And they, they're going to go, uh, they, they, uh, uh, we're going to to um, they, they were going to march uh, through the Muslim and Palestinian neighborhoods. Now, before that, they raid Al Aqsa Mosque, right? And then they do that to make sure that everything is lit up. Everything is led to to a conflict because then Bibi needs to make sure that it, Benjamin Netanyahu Netanyahu needs to make sure like he can only protect his. Oh look. I saved the day. I murdered Palestinians. Elect me again. Re-elect me. Pfft. Yeah, okay. All right. And then you say, for people who support Israel, I support Israel. Hmm. I, I, I love that. I love that because Benjamin Netanyahu doesn't support America. He's oppressed millions and millions of people for decades. For decades. Oh, I support Israel, but he doesn't support America. Only thing he supports is the goddamn money we give him. And I'm going to be talking about the money that that it, it relates to Israel. So, huh, what what a what a messed up system that we've got the United States both sizing this 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 dumbass crap. And by the way, I love how the state the State Department Ned Price doesn't come out and condemn the killing of Palestinian children. Oh, but if it was American children, you know, oh no, actually they wouldn't give a flying f either. Boy, boy, oh boy, how crazy. <laughs>